Hello there, in this video I'm going to give you my top 5 tips for buying cheap Lego sets. Now this applies to discontinued Lego sets like the UCS Star Wars ones that are incredibly expensive, also brand new Lego sets and used or second user, whatever you call it, Lego sets as well. Lego can be quite an expensive hobby, so I'm hoping that these five tips will help you get that set you want at a cheaper price and make the hobby a little bit more affordable. Anyway, let's get on with the video. At number five, we have Bricklink. So I've made a few videos now about using Bricklink to get cheap Lego sets, specifically discontinued UCS sets. In my first video I showed you how you could use the part out feature on Bricklink to buy a UCS X-Wing Red 5 for about £100, which is about a third of the price that you'll find it for brand new on eBay. Now the disadvantage is that the sets aren't complete so they didn't have the instructions or uh, any minifigures or stickers and not everybody can live without those things as I found out from the comments on that video but if you're just interested in building the model itself it's a really good way of getting those sets at a fraction of the cost. So the video guides that I've made actually walk you through step by step how to get those sets cheaply using Bricklink's part out feature. But that's not all Bricklink is useful for. You can actually buy new and used complete sets on Bricklink as well. So it's another good place just to look for the price of a set. And also as a side point, if you've lost any parts from your Lego sets and you can't get them easily from the Lego website, Bricklink is the place to check. Basically you can buy every single Lego part ever, ever manufactured from independent sellers um, on Bricklink. It's a bit like the eBay of the Lego world. And there's also a website called Rebrickable where you can enter in the current sets that you own. It adds it to your sort of inventory of Lego parts. And then if you want to go and build another set that you don't own, Rebrickable will actually tell you the proportion of parts and which parts you actually need to be able to build that new model. So that's quite a cool feature. And again, I've made a video on that, which I'll leave down below as well. At number four, we have discounts with retailers. So this tip works best for brand new sets because, well, basically from online retailers and high street retailers, that's all you're really going to get, isn't it? Don't kind of disregard those online retailers and high street shops because they often have absolutely amazing deals on Lego. A lot of you have commented on my previous videos telling me that Walmart actually have um, a really competitive discount thing on Lego every so often. In this country, in the United Kingdom, a company called Argos, they frequently have um, buy two get one free on Lego. So, I mean, you can buy two Millennium Falcons and get one free. That's a significant saving. And Amazon have things like Prime Days where they reduce certain sets. Not everything is going to be reduced, but if you're looking for something in particular, it's worth waiting until a Prime Day and then checking out the Amazon website. Now don't make the mistake of thinking that online prices are always the cheapest. In actual fact, sometimes high street stores can surprise you and trump those online ones. For example, at the Lego stores, like the Lego store in Leicester Square in London, they actually have exclusive sets that are definitely much cheaper in that store than you would find it anywhere else, especially online. So do check the high street stores as well. At number three, we have eBay. So eBay is actually a good place for new and used Lego sets. You can find lots of listings on there. Usually they're listings where people have removed the minifigures and so they reduce the price slightly. That's probably because they want to sell on the minifigures. But if you're not that fussed about minifigures, then there are lots of sets available for you on eBay. I usually sort by price to have a look at the cheapest sets otherwise you could end up paying a lot more than you really should. A lot of sellers when they list things they put a buy it now or best offer feature so if you want to chance your luck you can send an offer of 10 quid below or 10 dollars whatever country you're in below the asking price and see if the seller will accept your offer. A lot of the times in my experience they actually do. You'll also find lots of job lots of Lego on eBay so great big boxes of used Lego 
make sure that the seller will confirm that it's genuine and not some of the fakes that are out there. Um, but if you can get a great big box of Lego or a load of cheap Lego sets, used Lego sets that may even be incomplete and therefore a little bit cheaper, if you add those to your BrickLink inventory, you could find that building that next Lego set that you really want to build is a lot easier and cheaper because you've got half of the parts already. But for me, the best thing about eBay is the hidden gems. So when sellers, let me just have a coffee actually. When sellers sell things on eBay, they can be a little bit lazy slash stupid. So look out for common spelling mistakes in the titles of Lego listings. So perhaps they've misspelled Millennium. So if you put in a slightly different spelling of Millennium, you might get a really cheap Lego um, set come up that nobody else has found because they haven't misspelled it when they've been looking for it. So that's worth doing. Another thing is incomplete listings. When you search for things on eBay, the search isn't that intelligent. So don't be kind of too clever and add too much information. The less information you put in, for example, Lego, Star Wars, X-Wing, the, f the more results you will actually uh, receive. And that way you're more likely to find listings that other buyers haven't found themselves. At number two, we have garage sales. In my experience, people sell things at garage sales much cheaper than they would online, for example, if they were selling them on eBay. And I think there's a mixture of reasons for that. Firstly, they don't have to list it. They just want a quick sale. They don't have to pay the eBay fees, so they're not factoring that into the price. Um, and I think, to be honest, I think a lot of people who sell things at garage sales aren't really aware of how much the Lego sets that they're selling actually sell for. So there really are a number of bargains to be had. For me, this is actually the best tip in this list. I've had the most luck um, at garage sales. I made a, another video, a haul of things that I got from a garage sale. Got some amazing things, including a one to eight scale Ferrari, which is an absolutely beautiful model. And I feel like it's the most sort of untapped resource for getting secondhand Lego sets. A good way of finding garage sales, sometimes your local area will have a Facebook page and they will actually advertise garage sales on there. So have a look on Facebook, see if you can find it, maybe in your local newspaper as well. Definitely check them out. This is the best chance you've got of getting a reduced price Lego set. At number one, toy fairs. So this one really surprised me actually, but I recently went to a toy fair and found some amazing Lego sets. I thought toy fair prices would be absolutely extortionate given that they're there to sell vintage toys. I've been to some antique fairs where basically all the items are incredibly overpriced. So I was quite surprised recently to go to a toy fair and find very, very cheap Lego. In fact, one um, company based in the UK, I think it's called Brickbin, they had a huge setup at this toy fair uh, with about five trestle tables full of old, mostly discontinued um, Lego sets. They weren't boxed, but they did have the instructions and they were complete um, and they were reasonably priced, you know, between sort of five and 20 pounds, depending on the size of the set. Um, and there was just so much to choose from. It was an overwhelming selection of Lego sets. And what would happen is someone would buy one of the Lego sets on this massive table, they'd pick it up and give it to them, and then out of nowhere, the people running the store would sort of pick another completely different Lego set out from under the table and replace it. So there was this endless supply of unusual Lego sets. So I highly recommend you check out toy fairs from those people. I also bought um, a Lego alarm clock um, and an old box of Lego, which I reviewed in that Lego haul that I, I mentioned previously. And an advantage of that is that you get to see the sets in person. So when you buy online, you don't really kind of get to have the box in your hand or see the model, see what it's like, see if it's something that you really want to buy. So toy fairs are a really good hands-on way of looking at those sets. And here's a bonus for you. Friends. Okay, that was weird. If you've got friends that collect Lego as well, perhaps you can organise a trade with them. So if you've got a set that they want and vice versa, you can just swap. Or perhaps because they're your mate, they'll do you a deal. You know who you're dealing with. They're not going to rip you off. You might even be able to get a special mate's price. So that's definitely worth considering as well. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed these five tips. Let me know down below if you think I've missed any or if you've got any great tips that you think you'd like to share with people. I'm going to leave a link to some relevant videos here, carefully selected to be relevant to this one. Do subscribe if you enjoy my videos and I shall see you next time for another one.